Whoa. Oh, I went too far. Um, yes, making love and marriage intentional. I think a lot of people go into love and marriage by accident. You fall in love. Oh. You get married. Oh. And then, oh no. <laughs> Um, some of you may be dating, some of you may be engaged, some of you may already be married, and some of you may never want to marry, and that's okay. I'd like to offer some suggestions, though, for those that are thinking about it, that you intentionally make the odds a little bit better in your favor. I know if you're sitting out there and think you are in love, you probably will not listen to me much, but please try and be honest with yourself and about the person you love. Life is all about change. We are changing every minute, every hour, every day. When you fall in love and get married, things change. So we, let's just kind of cruise through a few little pictures here. Um, any guesses? De Toro. De Toro's. Oh, you! <laughs> I didn't know what it was going to be. Dr. Spivey. Uh, Gail Good. Yes. <laughs> Gail is <Gail>? very good. <laughs> <laughs> the Rushes, Janet and oh. <laughs> Mike. D oh. Hearts. Yes, I'm here in Gilda. <laughs> Bakers. Thompsons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Stephen Leary. Thoughts? President Ekman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. And yours truly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. These are some pictures of young couples starting their journey of love and marriage. You notice clothing styles changed, hairstyles changed, hair fell out. <laughs> you physically change. I was a size three. Your attitudes change. Your emotions change. You grow up. No one goes into marriage thinking they won't make it. Everyone has this picture of what marriage would be like. Oh, we'll sit on the couch and just stare into each other's eyes. <laughs> he or she will always be attentive to me. Right on cue. Thanks. We'll always love each other forever. There'll be plenty of money for everything we want. He'll stop playing those video games and talk to me. She'll start loving to clean and cook for me. Uh, reality check. Nope. <laughs> you want to have the best person by your side. The one that will be with you in the good times and the bad ones. The one who will treasure you the rest of your life. No matter what happens. You want someone you can grow old with, be comfortable with. Someone who finishes your thoughts and takes care of you when you're not able to do so. The key to having this for the long haul is to marry the right person with the right stuff. The key is to think intentionally about it. So I'm going to give you some, uh, some ten, tip, 10 tips, there's plenty more, it's just 10, that might make you have some better odds of being with the right mate. Did you know when we fall in love we become idiots? Okay. It's a proven fact. You will ignore your friends, family, schoolwork, even change your personality when you think you have found true love. When you change your whole personality to be in love, there's something wrong with that relationship. Psychologists have found that infatuation lasts 18 months to two years, and then it's over. What happens if you marry during that time? and you have nothing else to build it on. Well, I just don't love you anymore and I'm done. I hope that's not your answer.
fell in love with you. I don't know how. I don't know why. I just did. That's a very sad meme. You don't know why you fell in love? If you cannot articulate why you are in love with someone other than you love them, you're in trouble. That is not intentional. And by the way, just because you're in love with someone doesn't mean you should marry them. That's the whole point of this, okay? <clears throat> so, my first tip, and a very important one, is take your time. Don't ever settle. Don't feel like you have to be married before you leave college. It's very easy here at York and at other colleges too. It's not just here. <laughs> but you feel pressured to get married sometimes before you leave. Please don't fall into that trap. It's also easy to start dating someone and you just stay with them because it's hard to break up and see them every day. Everyone just assumes you'll keep dating. It can become a habit. It is very easy to fall in love with falling in love. How do people find their soulmate in the first week of college? It took me four months to find the business office. <laughs> I've seen people, way too many couples, through the years, find their soulmate that first week of school. Some worked out, most didn't. Tip number two, if your friends don't like the relationship, cut it off. Your friends want the best for you. They know you. The person you've been going out with for only a few weeks may not. If your friends are not impressed, you should think long and hard about that relationship. If you find yourself saying things like, oh, but you don't know him like I do. He's different when he's with me. Oh, that's a big red flag. A breakup may seem to be the end of the world, but maybe, just maybe, that's God closing a door so that you won't be hurt later. And speaking of friends, he or she whoever you fall in love with, should be your friend. Uh, I think the best marriages were built on friendship first and then love. So, tip number three. You need to go on a long car ride with them. <laughs> you learn a lot about a person's personality and character when you're in a car with them for a long time. How do they handle a driver cutting them off? <clears throat> do they get road rage? Do they scare you? Do they get impatient? Do they scream at other drivers? Do they scream at you? Or do they have patience and take those things in stride? Laugh them off and go, well, you know, it happens. I'll let you read that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important also to notice how they treat work staff in a restaurant or janitors. Are they rude? Do they tip well? I firmly believe that everyone should work in a restaurant in their life to know how hard it is. Okay? Um, <clears throat> if you're with someone who does not treat others with respect, get over them. Plus, all these things will become even worse after you get married. Number four, how do they treat their family? Are they rude? Do they yell at them? Do they expect their mother to wait on them hand and foot? Is that what you want as a partner? Even more importantly, is that what you want as an example to your children? Are you, are you are marrying their family. You may say, oh, I'm not marrying their family. No, you are. They will be your children's grandparents. The saying, like mother, like daughter, is very true. Ask my husband. 
It is much better to try and get along with them from the beginning. If there are major issues with the family, beware. Just saying, beware. Number five, you want to find somebody with a great sense of humor. You're going to have hard times, times when nothing goes right. Neither of you have a job. You only have $4 to your name. True story. Times when your entertainment consists of keeping track of how many cockroaches you kill every day because you live in a trailer in Mississippi. True story. <laughs> times when you may lose your job. True story. During such times, about all you can do is pray and have laughter. You have to have a sense of humor. A sense of humor will last, looks do not. Number six, are they a hard worker? Are they ambitious? Do they seek to do the best at whatever they do? Or do they just let opportunities slip by because they're lazy? Do they work hard to be what they want to be or do they just get by? What kind of grades do they make? What are they going to be able to do for a living? Let's face it, there are a lot of people out there and most toilets are not self-cleaning. <laughs> Chances are you've already dated one. Please don't think they will gain ambition after you are married. It won't happen. <laughs> ambition is enthusiasm with a purpose. Very important in who you marry. Number seven, what annoys you a little bit now will annoy you a lot in 10, 20, 40 years down the road. And it goes both ways. Coming up on almost 46 years of bad puns. And they seem to be getting worse. Habits such as biting or picking your fingernails, making noises when you eat, twirling your hair, interrupting, making weird noises, tapping something, whistling, eating the crust off your bread first. We won't go into that. <laughs> the list goes on and on. The habit or tick will start to get to you after a while. By the way, this is where a sense of humor comes into play. Make sure you can live with those little annoyances and those things they do because they're not going to stop when you get married. <laughs> Number eight, don't make excuses for their behavior. This is a biggie. If you find out you're dating someone and you are having to say to people, oh, I'm so sorry, he didn't mean to be so rude, she didn't mean to be so rude, oh, I'm sure she didn't mean to talk to you that way, oh, he never acts like that, going back to the friend one. They usually don't talk that way, honestly. Bad sign. How do they solve disagreements? Do they yell, curse, scream, or do they talk it out? Can they apologize? Can they truly forgive? And definitely, definitely, if there is any kind of abuse, physical or mental, you need to get out of that situation immediately. No excuses ever for physical or mental abuse. But you fall in love, see? And then you'll take things that you wouldn't take. Be intentional. When you don't believe you deserve the best, <coughs> you will put up with the least. Did you hear that? When you don't deserve you, when you don't believe you deserve the best, you will put up with the least. I forget what this one says. That there's no virtue in tolerating toxic behavior. Number nine. Is there an addiction <clears throat> such as gambling, pornography, drinking, drugs? And yes, maybe even video games. How much will you tolerate? All of these things will break down a marriage after time. 
It will destroy your children. If you go into marriage with any of these addictions present, you are asking for trouble. The damage that these can do are immense in a marriage and a family. Intentionally stay away from people with addictions. Now, I'm not saying not to love these people, just don't date them. <laughs> Slide. Oh, if you could read. Addiction is a family disease. One person may use, but the whole family suffers. And then last but not least, do they share your belief in God? Do they have the same values as you do? The same morals? Are they going to be with you on your spiritual journey? Or will they be a detriment? Of course, this means you have to have a faith. Do you want your children to have faith? It is so much easier when both parents have the same faith for their, <clears throat> for their children to have faith. When daddy never goes to church or mommy just drops them off at Sunday school, what is that teaching the child? If your faith is important to you, you better make sure the person you marry also has that same type of faith. Can't stress that enough. I have a daughter who unfortunately did not pay attention to most of these. She got married within a year. He had cheated on her when she was dating. He mentally abused her. They had two children very quickly. They were divorced in five years. It was a very hard thing to watch as a mother. I don't want that for any of you. Please hear this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, you want someone that will walk with you, not on you. You want someone that will cherish you, protect you, and provide the best for you, not someone that will abuse you. You want someone that brings you up, not someone who takes you down. You want someone who brings you closer to God, not farther away. You have to intentionally look for those qualities in a mate. If you wait until you find someone with all these qualities, I promise you it will be worth it. And those dirty toilets are still out there. Thank you.